psychiatrists. South Africa's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, Noma Temba Tambo, has paid tribute to the late Ambassador Lindy Mabuza. Tambo spoke to SABC correspondent Laura Mack in Isherwood. So we're here to talk about the passing of Ambassador Lindiwe Mabusa. You have or has a very close relationship with her and some of your fondest memories of course are coming to London to see her when she was ambassador here in this house. Tell me about that. It was quite remarkable the way that she would call me to come. Um, come to London, I need your help. I'm having a conference or I'm doing a this or a that. And um, she would call me to come and she'd put me to work. But whilst I was being put to work, I was also very, very much aware of the fact that she really didn't have to have me here. Um, I don't think I really added any value <laughs> to what she was doing, but it was her way of just reminding me that she was there. Um, and so I would come and I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to observe her at work and um, always striving for perfection in everything she did. Um, carrying a million balls in her head, um, busy with so many projects. But what she managed to achieve in her time here in the United Kingdom was to build the most phenomenal body of support, goodwill um, for South Africa amongst the British people. And she had tremendous things happening, like massive concerts um, in Trafalgar Square, and um, arranging for massive delegations of South Africans to travel around the country with music going to Edinburgh, for example, and exposing the British people to what makes South Africans unique. She did it so, so well. And of course, she also took the opportunity to expose people to our classical performers. So we have a lot of South Africans currently, and I'm, I'm convinced it's because of the seeds that she sowed, who are in various places here. Royal School of, um, Royal Academy of Music, for example. There are a lot of South African students there. Um, the Royal Opera House, we've had South African singers there. Um, ballet, everywhere you look, you will find South Africans who are bearing the fruit of the work that she did when she was the High Commissioner here. Of course her skills were so broad as well, like you say she was a journalist in her time, also a, a sort of supporter of the arts there. Is it unusual to find that in one person, somebody to have such a breadth of strength? I think, what's, I think so. Um, for example, she was a poet and she wrote books. A lot of them. And when she wasn't writing poetry, she was um, producing books about other people. Um, I know she did one for former President Mbeki, and she did several um, on my father, um, who she adored, and who adored her back. She was just everywhere doing everything. But she took so much pleasure in it. Um, I don't think she regarded it as work. And I remember the last time she was here, we were driving somewhere, and she looked out of the window and she said, oh my goodness, I think I might be seeing this for the first time. So I said, why? You, you lived here? She said, no, because, you know, whenever I get in the car, I was always reading or checking a speech or taking notes about something. My head was never looking out. It was always looking down. So she, she really never wasted a second. And um, I've spoken to people since I've been here about her times and the wonderful sense of joie de vivre at the High Commission um, and the wonderful events she would put on there. Ah, yes, the glory days, I think. You spoke about her relationship there with your father as well. And what was that like? You were obviously like a younger girl then did you understand the kind of relationship that they had it was quite strong wasn't it it was a strong relationship and um he trusted her uh you know one of the things that uh, the anc was always so good at was that they would watch the younger people 
and see how they behaved. And once they were sure that this one is steady, then they would call them out and say, right, you're being sent here, you're being sent there. And even though Aunt Lindy had not done anything remotely like that before, he spotted the potential and he knew that this is a young lady that is strong, solid, and I can trust her. And so he sent her off. And um, she did the most tremendous work in Scandinavia, particularly in uh, Sweden, uh, where she still has friends. Um, and oh, she's just tremendous, you know, she really was. And uh, after she was in Sweden, uh, she went to New York again, um, still has strong relations, had strong relationships there with people who have so much respect for her. Um, and she has just never stopped. She's never looked back. She's been there for so many people. I mean, she's, she's helped people. She's supported people. She's been a mother to people, a sister to others. Um, and she just, take, you know, she would take everything in her stride. So it was wonderful to see um, that she was flying. Um, for me, I was really almost too young to understand the full nature of her relationship with my father. But I heard about it from her and I witnessed, of course, the relationship she had with my mother. Um, there's a picture at my brother's wedding um, where the two of them are both sitting together laughing and they're both wearing blue, coincidentally. And he's named the picture Sisters in Struggle. And I thought that was so apt because they understood each other so well. Um, and they both had the same sort of tremendous sense of humor. Aunt Lindy Webb was actually very funny. Um, but as I say, she was a perfectionist, but she was a nurturer. And that nurturing mm -hmm. instinct came in as well once your parents had passed away. Yes, very much so. But I think, you know, it's not that I was special in that way. She was nurturing to everyone. Um, but that was just my recollection of, you know, how her life impacted on mine. And as I say, it's just the most wonderful thing to be here, back again uh, in this house that um, she loved and she filled with laughter and joy um, and where so many South Africans have come for refuge, actually. It must be so nice to be able to walk around the building and kind of feel those memories. Well, I know she threw me a fantastic dinner in the, uh, uh, in the dining room, which is quite a, a large room, and uh, the table seats 20. And uh, that was a wonderful memory. And she would do these things kind of, you know, impromptu. Not a big deal, just, oh, I'm inviting some people for dinner. And there you see all these wonderfully talented, gifted people. And she would throw the most tremendous um, soirees and things like that, but always with a view to improve the, the way that people saw South Africa and always with a view of making them understand that the country, South Africa, was a safe harbour and that, you know, people should go, they should invest, um, they should learn about us, about our struggle for independence and the resilience of the people. Hi, Commissioner Tambay. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure.